Hello everyone, Ben here. Hope this video finds you doing well, and most likely starving for some wiffle ball content to ease the cravings before opening day. If you are, well, today I got a little bit of a doozy for you. In this video, I am going to be talking about, in no particular order, five wiffle ball players who are currently out of the game, but perhaps exited the game just a little too early. I know the term retired can be a little vague in wiffle ball because guys stop playing or take a break for various reasons. So this video is designed to be honorary in a way to guys who were extremely talented and if they were to return to the game could probably easily hold their own against the best talent in the game today or if they had continued to play would have continued a trail of dominance. And speaking of guys that could 100% compete if they returned, our first guy up is going to be somebody who actually proved that last year. Although his team never won the big game at the Palisades, you would be hard pressed to find someone in the league who wouldn't tell you that Scott Fleeser was one of the best players in Palisades history. He had the highest winning percentage of any pitcher in the Palisades, while at the same time having a career ERA of 0.74. To top all this off, he threw 15 shutouts and three no hitters in his career, but also no slacker at the plate. Fleeser hit to a career 250 average with 34 home runs. It seemed that Fleeser had permanently gotten out of the game after the demise of the Palisades WBL, but to many people's surprise, including my own, he would appear at the 2021 MAW opening day, where he would throw a no-hitter against Voodoo, striking out 12 to eliminate the powerhouse in the semifinals. Fleeser really wasn't a consistent player the rest of the year for East Coast Elite, and seemingly has no plans to play this year or in the near future. It's a little sad because he truly is an elite pitcher and one of the best players to come out of the Palisades and the 2010s in general. To the online Whiffs community, you may know Joe Walters from this famous clip back in the day. This clip is just a small taste of the nasty pitching that Walters used to terrorize Golden Stick batters for years. Walters began playing in Golden Stick at a young age, and from medium pitch to fast pitch, was one of the most well-known pitchers in the league. You really have to go back and watch a lot of film to truly appreciate how deep of an arsenal and how much command of the zone Walters had, but trust me, it's incredible. Eventually, due to arm injuries, he stepped out of the limelight and has not returned. For a time, it was rumored that he was going to play with Way Too Beautiful at the 2020 United Wiffleball NCT, but that did not happen. While he still follows the game, it seems that Joe is content to watch from the sidelines, and th there's nothing wrong with that. I wish the best of luck to Joe in his future endeavors, and hopefully one day I'll get the chance to sit down and talk to him about some of those old Golden State games back in the day. Come on, swing it back! All right, tomorrow. Lost his thick and skin. You still alive? Still alive. Tomorrow's a new day. Tomorrow we come down to win and take that home. Dude, how much do you love Zach Thompson being on your Doom spot? Thompson has a spot on Doom for as long as he wants it. That is a tough spot to land, Zach Thompson. And you've landed it. You've landed it. It said it bleed blue Doom. Oh, Thompson. Don't ever cheat on him. If Wiffleball ever had its version of Max Scherzer, it might just be the one and only Zach Thompson. Though I never had the pleasure of watching him play in person, watching him over video, it's hard to deny the sheer tenacity and passion that Zach played with. Zach is known for his time with the legendary franchise Doom. More specifically, the team's run in Golden Stick Fast Pitch from 2011 to 2012, where the team won back-to-back -back championships knocking off the usual suspects and the 603 All-Stars in the finals. Both of these title runs were led by the pitching of Zach Thompson and his hitting, which owns one of the most famous hits in wiffle ball, the tying home run against the suspects in 2011. After these seasons, Zach took some time off to focus on his personal life and is now a family man with his whiffs glory days well in the rear view. It will always be a personal musing of mine, wondering what would have happened if Zach had continued to play through the mid to late 2010s, but he can still rest his laurels on the incredible run he had back in his prime.
Next up, another familiar face from the Palisades WBL, Mr. Tim Trenary. He is ranked as the third greatest player in league history, and it's easy to see why. He is the all-time Palisades league leader in wins pitching with 64 and through a league's best 43 shutouts. He is one of two pitchers in the league to ever win back-to-back -back Cy Young awards and is the only pitcher to strike out 200 batters in a season twice. Trenary is a Palisades champion as he played a huge role in the Tigers championship run back in 2013 and followed it up in 2014, winning league MVP. Trenary was an absolute gamer, and I really wish we could have seen what he was capable of outside of the Palisades, but unless something changes in the near future, I'll have to leave that up to my imagination. Dallas from Doom, facing certain doom yesterday. Uh, the wife called him out of his hotel uh, booking, and he had to drive home to, to be father and, and husband. And Three in the, morning. the only chance of him making this tournament today was if he packed the kids up and brought them with daddy. And it appears that he's done that. You want to talk about how you pulled that off? Well, this life of football. Every Saturday I'm gone. Dilly! Hold on, my, car, my kids yeah. get hit by a car. At number one, we have a player that is incredibly unique in the way he dominated two different styles of the game. That player would be Dallas Maul. Dallas played on the same Doom team as the previously mentioned Zach Thompson and also holds those 2011 and 2012 Fast Pitch National Championships. But that's just the tip of the iceberg that was the incredible run Dallas had in the early 2010s. In 2011, he won the Golden Stick Yard National Championship in Vegas with the Massachusetts throwbacks, then followed it up defeating the enemy in 2012 at Staten Island to win back-to-back -back yard national championships. But to find the greatest accomplishment of his career, we would have to go back to Vegas for the 2011 Ultimate Whiffler. This 1v1 tournament matched together medium and fast pitch styles to see who the best overall wiffle ball player was. Dallas had won the 2010 Ultimate Whiffler when it had just been the fast pitch style. But in 2011, Dallas opted to play the medium pitch style and would face off in the finals against fast pitch thrower Sean Steffi. Dallas overcame a five run deficit in the last inning to win the finals game 10 to five and become the 2011 Golden Stick Ultimate Whiffler. After these years, Dallas would slowly get out of the game. And while he has absolutely nothing to prove at this point, I would be interested to see him play or hear his thoughts on the current tournament circuit. However, I was told by one source that a main reason Dallas got out of the game was the lack of money in winning tournaments as the years went on. If this is true, it's an interesting take, but regardless, I would be curious to see what Dallas could do today, particularly from the dish. <laughs> That's what just happened. Well, I thought I had a good shot when we were on the upper fields with White. Uh, down 5 nothing. The lights, lights went out, and we needed to crown a true champion. And there's enough light here to see. Uh, I was at quite a disadvantage seeing Steffi in the dark, but uh, got my 10 runs and back to back ultimate wolf. Three time pounds. <laughs> Greatest of all time. It's simply the best. And there you have it, guys. Five legendary wiffle ball players that maybe retired a little early. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a fun one for me being able to go back and talk about these guys as some of them I really grew up watching when I was just getting into the game. And it's cool to be able to share that with some of my viewers who may not even know who they are. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I do appreciate it. For more elite wiffle ball content, you can subscribe here to Wiffle Statement for new videos every Friday, and you can also follow me on Twitter as well as TikTok. All those links are down below in the description, so please be sure to go check them out, and let me know what you think of these players down below in the comments. Going to wrap up here, boys. Get out there and play some whiffs, and I'll be talking to you guys soon. Goodbye.